Hi everyone, welcome to Camille's Holistic Health Show. I am Dr. Cam, and today we're going to talk about insomnia. This is something that lots of people are suffering from, especially women, especially those who are suffering with any autoimmune or chronic conditions. And you are trying to get a very, very well-balanced lifestyle, but you're still having insomnia. And this can often cause a lot of problems in our health and wellness. This is why I talk about it being a ticking time bomb. And we know that insomnia can really make, make matters worse for you. It can really impact your health in a negative way. And we're going to go it to it in a more detailed way. So if you, this is a video of interest and you really want to learn a little more about holistic health in detail, then go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell so you can get notified every time I have another video coming out. So let's talk a little bit about insomnia. Insomnia is when a person has problems sleeping or related to sleeping problems that are giving them difficulties to either fall asleep, stay asleep, or waking up too early in the morning. And this really affects our health, especially our heart and our brain, and later on all the other important organs for us to function at an optimal level. So over a period of time, you know, sufferers develop mood disorders, uh, lack of motivation, the inability to concentrate is very, very common, and a lack of energy and constantly being tired, unable to complete or finish your tasks, whether it be job related, whether it be home related, little tasks that you have for self, even just to cook. It's just such a problem to uh, complete these exercises, these tasks. And, you know, insomnia is has a very grave effect over a period of time, as we know, um, both physical and psychological, right, and emotional, and impaired mind functioning, um, accidents, very common, anxiety, depression, stress, heart attacks, like I was mentioning about your heart, and headaches are very, very common uh, in um, insomnia. So we're going to go into the various types of insomnia, how you can um, overcome this, and the various types of foods that you can really, you know, hone in on and focus on yourself because, you know, sleep is so, so essential for our health and sleep occurs in a very unique manner. Um, when it's time to sleep, the retina of our eye sends a message to your brain. Your brain then sends a message to another part of your brain to produce this hormone called melatonin. Uh, this in turn causes a drop in temperature in your body and this causes you to fall asleep. Wow. It is, we are just such complex creatures, right? It's amazing how um, we adapt and we, um, over so many centuries, and our bodies are able to cope this way. So, you know, hormones like melatonin is so, so important to, you know, fall asleep, stay asleep, and to sleep over a certain amount of time. That's that's the important thing. You don't want to be getting up, falling asleep, getting up, falling asleep, interrupted sleep. You want to sleep all throughout. So very important. Uh, we're going to go now into prime uh, primary insomnia, insomnia. And it means actually the absolute uh, medical and physical, emotional uh, reasons that you might have.
for insomnia. So that's primary insomnia. And secondary is related to medical, psychological, and physical, but generally secondary is insomnia is treated by someone and the primary insomnia is treated with behavioral therapy. So just various uh, ways to relate to it. Uh, primary insomnia just basically means there's no medical or physical or emotional reason for your insomnia. Okay, that's primary. Secondary means that there's a reason for your insomnia, whether it be medical or physical or psychological. Okay, so important to know, um, you know, because there are various ways or, or reasons why we have insomnia. And based on that, it's very important to know how to, you know, uh, treat it, whether it be through um, going through physician or any other various types of, of ways that you want to approach it. There's behavioral therapy, uh, often includes things such as sleep hygiene, progressive muscle relaxation, control, stimulus control, cognitive uh, restructuring, uh, and sleep restriction and scheduling. That is a little deep for, because that's more into psych psychiatric or psychology or some, some sort of counseling that you, you are gonna get by those types of therapists that have that kind of experience. So again, ways to approach it, um, knowing exactly what is going on in your body, and then uh, choosing the ways that you want to, you know, approach insomnia. So let's go into some of the symptoms. Now, chronic insomnia, this is obviously if you've had it for quite some time, is especially dangerous, right? Because it's affecting our health at a, from a long stand, stand, a long point of time, uh, whether it be three years, five years, six months, uh, you know, it takes a toll on our mind, body, and it breaks the body down slowly. We really, really need seven to eight hours of sleep. And if the body can't have that, it cannot regenerate through the night. So very important because consider stress, depression, mental illness will either be one of the reasons uh, for your result in insomnia after related to chronic this is what I'm talking about, chronic insomnia. So it is definitely a ticking time bomb and, um, you know, very low ability to concentrate, like I had mentioned. This is one of, of and that's very dangerous, depending on whether you operate machinery, whether you have to drive to a particular site or to your job every day, um, wee hours of the morning, even eight o'clock in the morning, you know, and you haven't had a good night's sleep, you are taking your, uh, you know, your, your health and your well-being at risk, okay, and motor coordination could be impaired, and that's the inability to interact socially, and an increased risk of being involved in an auto accident, like I had mentioned. So, you know, chronic insomnia, when you're getting to a point where you are, you know it's really affecting you, you know, your motor coordination, your brain, your emotions, you know, your physical health is ailing. Uh, that's when, you know, you shouldn't be taking it uh, seriously then, but it, it's it's a, it's a time your body is telling you that, you know, something is wrong. So chronic insomnia also affects each and every part of a person's day, okay? Morning, noon, and night, it doesn't leave you alone. They can not perform adequately at work. You can't perform adequately 
in life in general. So, you know, you're constantly tired, you're constantly fatigued. Uh, you, you basically can't even uh, walk a mile. You can't raise your hand. You can't exercise. So, you know, some of the symptoms, trouble falling asleep, um, restless sleep, uh, frequent waking up at, during the night, trouble falling asleep, trouble falling back asleep, waking up way too early in the morning, and feeling tired and unrefreshed after the wake up and all through the day. Okay, and that is definitely uh, some things to consider. And um, I could go into statistics, I can go into different things, but you know, we know basically the little facts and the little tidbits that are important. Now we are going to go into certain steps to really alleviate your insomnia. Okay, so insomnia is different for each person. And what I love about holistic medicine, alternative medicine, call it what you will, it really hones in on an individualized approach to someone's health and wellness. This is what I do for many of my uh, homeopathic patients, for many of my clients. Um, at McClellan Natural Health, you can also find the link below to connect with me if you are willing to talk a little bit more about your insomnia. Um, insomnia is just definitely different for each person. Some can um, not fall asleep. Others wake up in the middle of the night, can't go back to sleep, unable to fall back asleep, and some wake up much, much too early during the, the time they're sleeping. Okay, so good to mention over and over again because lots of people viewing my videos always ask me, um, I didn't get that, uh, what did you say through that? So I try to repeat myself so you can really understand what I'm talking about. So most adults require, like I had mentioned, seven to eight hours of sleep each night, but that can really vary depending on the person. Some people have lots of energy to begin with, and uh, some people don't have as much of an activity day. They're probably sitting uh, at their desk throughout the day, so they're going to be less tired. Some people are walking through a site, through a hospital each day and need that sleep. So it, it varies for different people. And uh, of course, we're just unique and we have different needs. So let's uh, go into some little tips to help alleviate insomnia eliminate caffeine. We know this, right? But how many of us do it, especially if we love caffeine? Okay. I don't know how many people I've talked to, my clients, um, who just can't cut the, ca the caffeine. So whether you want to just cut it or eliminate it, I suggest that. But if you want to just uh, eliminate maybe a certain amount of cups a day, really important. Watch your intake with alcohol. If it's something that you love to do, maybe a glass uh, during the night before you sleep. Again, watch and take close uh, measures of that. And relaxation techniques. This is important. Um, a lot of people know it, know of it but don't do it and don't know how to. So, you know, a Kundalini uh, specialist or yogi specialist who's done that for quite some time, uh, look into someone that can really um, help you with coping with relaxation techniques um, because these are mindful ways because, you know, you're, you're probably holding in things thinking of things and you're not aware of it. So that's what mindful uh, ways or techniques that we can do to improve our health. 
limiting any stimulating activities at least a few hours before bed. Okay, and whether it be, I, you know, just look at your lifestyle and uh, accommodate to this. Uh, I try not to look at my phone uh, right before sleep, um, looking at things I need to do the next day. Uh, I think that activity really will probably keep me up at night. So it will tend uh, to make me think, overthink things. Uh, let's see, what do I need to do tomorrow? What things can I do? You know, the first step, the second step, the third step. And it keeps you, you know, uh, your mind running a little more. So that for me is definitely something I can't do. So look at your lifestyle and see what you can eliminate during these times before sleep. And keeping your routine during bedtime or before bed uh, the same each night, okay? So if you want to consider melting down, that's what I call it, you know, getting to a point where you're relaxing and getting slow, you know, you close your blinds by a certain time so you don't see any more light. That's what I tend to do. Close my blinds uh, at a certain time uh, when it's getting a little dusk. Close my blinds. Then I start to, you know, uh, watch a little TV, but my TV is a little slower. It helps me uh, think positively and uh, you know I listen to music right before sleep those things can really help you uh, wind down you know so it is a routine this might not be a routine for you but choose a routine to help you with this in such a way that your body starts to produce that melatonin right before sleep so you can be able to you know fall asleep and stay asleep for a longer period of time it may not take uh it may not have to happen because you know things don't happen overnight it will take a little time but be patient okay because we have to remember that with holistic medicine things are you know we are used to self gratification and you know Holistic medicine is about being patient and listening to your body. And once you listen to your body, uh, you make those connections between your, your mental, emotional, physical health. That is when everything starts to um, develop momentum for you and you will start to see improvements in your health. Sometimes it's drastic and sometimes it takes time. But, it, you know, you have to develop that momentum, stick to it, and don't come off the bandwagon, okay? So let's go into, and I wanted to also mention, it's really, really important, never nap. Not if you have insomnia. It is a hard thing to do, especially if you are just, you want to just get a nap in for five, seven, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, because you're so exhausted because you couldn't sleep the night before, but never nap because you will never get to the momentum you need in order to stop the insomnia, okay? So that is another tip for you to understand. No siestas, okay? So let's go into a little bit of the foods that you can eat before bedtime, maybe about two hours before, I really don't suggest anything before that because really digestive problems tend to keep you up at night. So if you have a full uh, stomach, that can actually keep you, uh, you know, up at night. So almond, almond butter, excellent uh, for 
you know, right before bed to help with insomnia. Turkey. Lean meats are really important, uh, especially chicken and turkey because they have uh, tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid that can only get uh, from, you know, eating and drinking, things like that. You can only get from what you consume. And it helps your body make serotonin. Serotonin is really important for you to relax, to sleep. And it also helps you man, uh, maintain or produce melatonin to make you fall asleep, stay asleep. So, you know, it is a sleep cycle, and these hormones are important to produce. Foods actually help, you know, in this whole, you know, problem that you're dealing with. So why not not only combine a, a healthy lifestyle through mindfulness techniques, different things that you're doing right before bed, but it's important to also mainly use healthy foods, to consume healthy foods like banana and yogurt. Yogurt has calcium that uh, processes the hormones that can actually help you sleep, stay asleep, like, like I had mentioned, tryptophan and melatonin. Okay, warm coconut milk, uh, almond milk, whatever milk that you can consume. Fatty fish, again, excellent because it also is in, it makes uh, vitamin B12, which helps actually make melatonin. So, you know, kiwi and chamomile tea, mint tea, these are really relaxing teas for the digestive system. Don't forget you have serotonin in your digestive tract as well. It's amazing that uh, all these hormones are connected in the mind-body connection. So what's affecting your digestive health is affecting your, basically your sleep and other things that are affecting your health, your chronic conditions as well. Um, so, you know, I had mentioned some really great things like honey. Um, it has, you know, really great benefits to help you fall asleep as well. So I gave you some really great tips, some really herbs. Um, you know, I talked about peppermint. I talked about uh, chamomile tea, even passion flower tea, very warming to the body and really would help you in the process. This is a process. This is something that will take time, and it's a process you're going through. So no self-gratification. It's something that you need to, you know, have as a lifestyle, okay? And a combination of all these things can really benefit you in the long run. I really hope this video is, a, you know, some help to you. And please share uh, any of my videos with anybody that you think needs them. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And uh, get notified because I have these videos coming out every week. And uh, comment. Don't forget to comment and let me know what you think. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I also wanted to uh, remind you that I have a new uh, challenge, a five-day challenge for women who have autoimmune or any other long-standing condition that are looking for more holistic approaches to their health and wellness, uh, alternative medicine, and uh, are looking for that in detail. I will put the links below. It's coming up next. July 31st is my first day coming up. And yeah, I would love to see you there. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you next time in the next video. Bye now.